Mr Deputy Speaker. I rise to support the Local Government Rate Oversight Amendment Bill 2018, which introduces a rate oversight scheme into the Local Government Act 1999. The bill chiefly amends Chapter 10 of the Act to insert Part 1A, Rate Oversight, that provides for the establishment, operation and reporting of a system to cap annual increases in Council's general rates. So why do I support this? Three main reasons I feel this bill is in the best interests of people living in King and, in fact, across South Australia. Reason one. There have been too many examples across the state of council spending ratepayers' money recklessly. On behalf of ratepayers in King, I support measures to encourage councils to deliver maximum return for every single dollar of ratepayers' money. Reason two, rate capping will deliver cost relief for families and businesses where councils are being irresponsible with ratepayers' money. Just like every household needs to budget and live within its means, so should every council. Reason three, our rate capping approach will encourage a better, more effective community engagement process to take place for all proposed projects that would take the council above the rate cap. Councils will need to clearly demonstrate what the council has undertaken to inform and engage its community on the proposed variation, it must be clear that the council has made every effort to explain to its community the necessity for a variation and must demonstrate there is a wide understanding of these reasons. The State Liberal Party took a policy to the 2018 state election to introduce a council rate cap to ease cost pressures for South Australian households and businesses. The introduction of the rate capping legislation on 20 June 2018 delivered on a key election commitment within the Marshall Government's first 100 days. This legislation will deliver more oversight, transparency and accountability for the local government sector. This government will work constructively with the local government sector in South Australia to have the best rate capping policy in the country. Whereas the Labor Party are focused on reasons why this won't work, our government will take the time to consult with ratepayers, industry groups, councils to agree a framework to make this work and benefit ratepayers across South Australia. This bill and commitment is one of the deliverables of our promise to lower costs. First, we slashed the emergency services levy bill, and now we propose to cap council rates and natural resource management levies, each deliverable focused on providing relief to families and businesses. The state Liberal government has a comprehensive reform agenda to ease cost of living pressures for South Australians, and capping council rates is a key part of our plan. <coughs> Over the last decade, council rates have increased at a rate that is three times the level of inflation, and this is simply not acceptable, and this is what my community have told me. When I was door knocking in Hillbank one day, I asked an elderly gentleman what was most important to him, and he told me, councils getting back to basics like fixing curbs. From his house on a beautiful rise in Hillbank, we could see across to the very large tennis centre in the distance, which has been delivered by the city of Playford and is reported <coughs> to have cost $8.9 million. This man told me he will never use these tennis courts and he hasn't seen many people on these courts since they were built. And what makes him really upset is that his curbs have crumbled. And when he contacted the council to get his curbs fixed, he said the council staff told him they had no budget available to fix his curbs. So him and his elderly neighbour cemented the curbs themselves. He took me to the area beside his driveway to show me the new curbing his and his neighbour had constructed 
two elderly gentlemen fixing their own curbs. He said it was necessary as they were afraid that people walking down their road would trip over these broken curbs. Last year also, I attended a community forum at One Tree Hill at which approximately 400 residents attended to discuss their concerns over a proposed rate increase. This had followed a meeting, I believe, at Anglevale, at which over 500 residents had attended with the same concerns about rising council rates. The outcome of these community meetings was a collaboration of residents who voted against and spoke against what so many residents believed was an unjustified hike in council rates. Since this time, the ratepayers in rural King have created a ratepayers committee as a subcommittee of the One Tree Hill Progress Association, and they are focused on fair rates and council efficiency. Last week, I provided this group a copy of the bill and asked the group to consider provision of feedback to our minister. This volunteer group are collaborating on how to keep rates affordable and make their council more accountable to ratepayers. Today we are saying enough is enough. We are asking to support this for support to cap council rates to protect households and businesses from more unjustified rate heights that are used to pay for unnecessary expenses and projects for which the majority of residents might not agree to. The bill provides a rate oversight framework that establishes three key elements. Firstly, primary rate cap, de cap determinations, the establishment of a rate cap provisions enabling a cap to be set, determining that the cap applies to council revenue recoverable from general rates and providing for its calculation on an annual basis for all councils, classes of councils or particular councils. Secondly, variation applications, setting out provisions that enable councils to apply for a variation of the rate cap by demonstrating engagement with their community on a variation and that a variation is necessary within the context of the council's operations and long-term financial planning. Three, monitoring and reporting, setting out provisions that enable monitoring and reporting on the rate oversight system to ensure compliance and understanding of the effect of rate oversight on councils. In accordance with the government's policy that the rate oversight system will be managed by an independent regulator, the bill appoints the Essential Services Commission of South Australia as the body responsible for, one, making rate cap determinations, two, receiving and assessing applications from councils for variations on the rate cap, and three, reporting on compliance and the outcomes of the system to the minister on a regular basis. I emphasise the new process will require councils to make it very clear to ratepayers the reasons for any variation application where they propose to increase rates above the cap. Councils will be asked to outline the community engagement process that the council has undertaken to inform and engage its community on the proposed variation. It must be clear in the variation applications that the council has made every effort to explain to its community the necessity for the variation. The council must provide views of the likely impact of the proposed variation on ratepayers, which may be informed by the community engagement process. The council must demonstrate how the council has considered alternatives to the variation, which might be a reprioritisation of spending or the use of alternative funding mechanisms, including the appropriate use of debt or council reserves. The councils will need to demonstrate how the variation represents value for money for its council and its ratepayers. Importantly, rate capping promotes the efficient use of council resources. Rate capping will ensure the elected members and staff 
look to make efficiencies across their operations before seeking a variation. Rate capping will ask for the Council to demonstrate the proposal is consistent with the Council's long-term financial plan and infrastructure and asset management plans. All South Australian councils are required to have these plans in place today, and they will be a critical component of an application for a variation as clear demonstration of the council's need for additional revenue. And for transparency, councils will be required to publish their application for variation on their website. We can see that since the Liberal Party announced our rate capping policy, some councils have already tightened their belts and kept rate increases to a minimum, which is great news for our ratepayers across South Australia. Rate capping will make councils more accountable to the people they represent and also ensure that councils have to look for efficiencies and aren't able to arbitrarily increase general rates or make them a bit lower when it comes to election time. This legislation will deliver more oversight, transparency and accountability for the local government sector. The state government's priority is to keep cost pressures down, but we don't want to get in the way of growth or the delivery of productive infrastructure and necessary services. That's why, through consultation with local government sector, we have devised a rate capping scheme that will enable councils to still increase their rates if they can convince ratepayers and the independent regulator that the increase is necessary. I look forward to this government working side by side with local government to ensure South Australia has the best rate capping scheme in Australia. We have been consulting and taking on board feedback from South Australian councils and reviewing the lessons of interstate approaches so that the model we adopt is the best approach here in South Australia. Our new government is leading by example to deliver tax cuts and savings to South Australia. We are going to take a, a cut in relation to payroll tax, the emergency services levy and land tax. So I think we are demonstrating already that we are committed to tightening our belts and delivering savings to South Australians. We are putting ourselves under the same sort of pressure as we expect councils to do. It has been disappointing to watch local government use ratepayers' money to launch a campaign to fight the rate capping proposal. I feel it would have been a fairer approach to provide ratepayers with unbiased information of how the current system works and how the Act works today and the rate capping alternative proposal and let ratepayers decide. Though I must say, from my 10 months of door knocking, ratepayers are telling me they want rates taxed and reduced. It has been my experience that elected members will fight very hard sometimes to protect the status quo. I encourage all ratepayers to get involved in having a say and choosing their elected members carefully in the upcoming council elections. Your elected members represent you at council and they should always be focused on spending your rate money carefully and on the services and projects which are most important to you. Importantly, your elected members should have the skills and experience to assess proposals, budgets and recommendations with a focus on efficiency, sustainability and return on investment. At a council function I attended recently as an an elected member who had served several terms said to me that they're running again in the 2018 elections and they told me they thought rates is just such a non-issue. Shame, yes. This contradicts what hundreds of ratepayers told me in their own council area. A few council staff members have told me they oppose rate capping because they believe it will result in service reduction. This is just not true. It feels to me at times that there is a culture in some councils of rate capping is bad instead of how can we make this work 
in the best way to benefit ratepayers. Rate capping is about running councils efficiently. Elected members and council staff continuously should be assessing if services are needed, valued, operating most effectively and delivering quality outcomes for ratepayers. This is about spending every dollar of ratepayers' money carefully. This is about negotiating hard every time for the best outcomes for ratepayers. This is about listening to ratepayers who are doing it tough in South Australia. As a councillor, previously, I took the time to read every verbatim comment at our, our ratepayers made when they had their say on the proposed annual business plans. And year after year, the feedback reminded our council that it should be living within its means. Rate capping is one way we can make councils more accountable. We also need greater transparency in the future of the debates in council chambers on all matters related to spending ratepayers' money. We need more long-term thinking and sustainable approaches. I am so pleased that a number of people have told me they will be running for the next council elections because they wish to be involved in the decision-making at council because they want to see that ratepayers are receiving maximum value for rate money. They want to see responsible spending. They want to see councils getting back to basics. Placing a cap on council rates will ease cost of living pressures for South Australians delivering a fairer system of council rates. The cap delivers on a key election promise to ensure fair and effective policies and process for SA ratepayers. This rate capping policy strikes the right balance between keeping cost pressures down for South Australian households and businesses, but also facilitates growth in the local government sector. Through consultation with local government, we have devised a rate capping scheme that will enable councils to still increase their rates if they can convince ratepayers and the independent regulator that the increase is necessary. Finally, I will share a message that was sent through from one of my electors this morning to me on the topic of rate capping. Got my rates notice today, gone up again. As a pensioner, you know the first thing that will make me have to sell my home is not old age. It is the cost of my rates. When I moved here, the rates were $284 a year. Now I pay $2,192. Tell me that that is fair. In summary, I commend rate capping to the House so we can deliver to South Australians lower costs, better services, and make South Australia the best place to live. Member for Newland. Thank you very much, Mr Deputy Speaker.